Hello, I've got here this mysterious liquid metal mixture that is supposed to contain mercury and gold. It is from a goldsmith who doesn't know where it comes from and nobody dared messing with it. So let's see if we can figure out what it exactly contains. This is probably the most dangerous thing I've ever done on this channel, so fingers crossed that nothing goes wrong. Also, please refrain from repeating anything you see in this video at home. Now let's start by opening the flask. Oh, amazing, this is sealed with a wooden cork. It's probably the safest sealing method for mercury. <laughs> probably can't get this out in one piece. Oh, shoot. I wonder how old this is. Simply opening this was an adventure on its own. And now let's pour the content into this flask. Okay, so it doesn't look like a lot, but because of the high density of mercury and gold, this is more than a kilogram. Which I find quite impressive. Mercury is a quite fascinating substance, I have to say. In order to get rid of the bulk of the mercury, we are going to have to distill it. The mercury vapors are pretty much all we have to worry about, because elemental mercury is practically not getting absorbed through the skin or the stomach. But because during the distillation we are going to turn this all into vapor, I am going to have to be particularly careful. The distillation apparatus is set up. Here we have our mercury. This can distill over. There's a thermometer where I can read the boiling point. Over this air condenser into this flask that I will cool with ice. Adding a stir bar to the mercury would be quite pointless because it would just swim on top and wouldn't actually help. Let's start by evacuating the system and hope that it's vacuum tight. And now let's turn the heat to full blast and hope this will distill over without any incidents. Looks like we are slowly approaching the boiling point of mercury now. Now we can very slowly see the invisible vapor front of mercury rising by the droplets condensing up here in the glass. Obviously you can't see the invisible mercury vapors. Now in order that this gets done today, I will wrap the whole flask in aluminium foil. And now the first little droplets of mercury are rolling down the condenser. Here you can see the product collecting in the receiving flask. Doesn't look very clean to be honest. Probably going to have to think of a better way to do this. I'm doing the distillation under vacuum for three reasons. First, if the pressure in the apparatus is lower than in the atmosphere, we can be sure that basically no deadly mercury vapor is going to leak out. Second, the boiling point of mercury at 375 degrees Celsius is very high and with the vacuum I can reduce it to 220 degrees Celsius, which is a lot more convenient temperature. Also, if the flask containing the boiling mercury pops, it will stop boiling immediately because of the rapid pressure rise, which is very important for safety. Okay, the distillation is as far as I can get it, I think. It's glowing red in there, and there's only a tiny droplet of mercury left. Here's the mercury after the distillation. As you can see, it doesn't look exactly very clean, so I'm probably going to have to repeat that. Here's what was left over from the distillation. So if there's any gold in the mercury, it must be in this bead. So I'm going to fill this into a separate container. And now I can filter the other mercury directly back into the distillation flask. In order to be able to filter the mercury, I'm going to have to make a tiny pinhole down in the filter paper. Otherwise the high surface tension of the mercury won't allow it to go through the paper. And now let's just try to pour it through. This looks quite unreal if you ask me. But also very beautiful. But yeah, the filtering seems to be far more effective than the distillation. Let's remove the remaining water from the surface. Kind of want to stick my finger in there. Oh my god, that feels incredibly amazing. It's unlike anything I've ever felt before. And very cold. 
Okay, so what went through the filter looks now very beautiful and shiny. But what didn't go through... I have no idea what that is about. But it's still quite a bit of mercury. Okay, that method is not going to cut it. So let's filter it through a syringe with some cotton, where I can apply some pressure. Oops! Err, that I had that bucket underneath. That's more like it. This is such a giant mess. Here's everything I managed to extract from the mercury metal. That's not mercury metal. It looks like this contains some sort of tar stuff and this might be some metal powders. Maybe this actually does contain some gold powder. To figure that out we're going to have to melt that down. Before I can heat this I need to make absolutely sure that there's no more mercury in there and as you can see there's still some mercury in there. So I'm going to heat this under vacuum and distill out any remaining mercury so we can melt it down without getting mercury poisoned. Even though with these small demands that's rather unlikely, but it's always a lot better to be safe than sorry. Otherwise need to very closely check the surface that there are no more tiny drops of mercury on there. Okay, the distillation is set up. This is where all the powder is with the mercury contamination and it should hopefully just go over here. Yeah, I've connected it to the vacuum again. So, let's go! Okay, this is not working. I need to find a better way of doing this. Now if I can't get the mercury out using physical means, I have to resort to chemistry. And the easiest way to do that is just to dissolve it in some nitric acid, which I have here. So let's put it in. Gold is not soluble in nitric acid, so that shouldn't be an issue. There we go. Nice and lively reaction. Well, what we have left here is more like a sand color. <laughs> maybe it is actually sand. Who knows? Or maybe it's gold. And now let's decant off the excess liquid from the gold dust or more likely sand. And now I'll have to rinse this like three times with distilled water. Wait. Now most of that stuff seems to have dissolved. Now that's interesting. Maybe that was just precipitated mercury nitrate which precipitates when you dilute it. Okay, so that was certainly not sand because it all dissolved in water which sand doesn't do. Let's try to dissolve the remaining mercury. Yeah, it forms exactly the same colored precipitate. Great, so now I have a bunch of dissolved mercury salts. Okay, so now seriously all of the residue has dissolved in nitric acid, meaning that it is impossible. Or at least as far as I know impossible that it contains a useful amount of gold because gold is not soluble in nitric acid. I don't know who had the idea that this contains gold, but I've now chemically proven that it doesn't. And I've cleaned up the mercury as a nice side effect. Now I just need to deal with all the soluble mercury. Which is a lot more dangerous than mercury metal. Now to make absolutely sure we haven't missed any gold in the mercury, let's squeeze the residue from the distillation through a paper towel. And now let's see how much gold we've caught here in this paper towel. Oh, and I've spilled a bunch. That's why I had the tub underneath. Well, no gold, but it still removed some impurities from the mercury, which is very nice. Now as a final step, let's filter the mercury into the storage bottle to get it really clean. Oh my god, that is so funny. The little brush I've been using to collect all the mercury beads is made of, uh, out of aluminium. One gets stuck there. That caused some aluminium oxide to grow out of there, which looks very fascinating, I think. So here are the results of the investigation from this mysterious mercury liquid. So now we have got some very pure and shiny looking mercury metal, which is awesome. And then we've got here this flask containing a deadly solution of mercury nitrate. And I will have to turn this back into mercury metal for safety reasons and because I have practically no use for mercury nitrate. If you want to see a video about me turning this back into mercury metal, make sure to tell me in the comments, otherwise I'll do it off camera. If you want to see more content like that, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Tell me in the comments down below if there are any experiments you would like to see with this mercury metal. Leave a like and thanks a lot for watching.